Um, yeah, it is. Who's speaking? I've got to just sort of plug in. Wait on. Oh. You're going flat at me, doll. Who's this? Well, I've got a few things to say about that. Um, well, well, bear with me. Hang on one sec. Sorry, sorry, Dr. McLean. So I've got on the line, I just wanted to let you know, I've also got on the line Kate How Can I get a Kate pen? I'm not really prepared because I actually tried to cancel this and you were in receipt of that email and it hasn't been cancelled. Yeah. And I was really forced and coerced by one someone from AAT to actually participate in this today, despite um, it being inequitable and unfair, and that, you know, the government's literally already killed if me. I could just... Yeah, okay. Yeah. Look, look I, under, I, did, I had seen your emails, and so I did understand why um, you were looking for maybe a different time or that you did feel uncomfortable with the conference for today. But if I could just explain sort of what we need to do at the conference, it's just a, it's just a chat, okay? Yeah. It's really just a chat, an opportunity for an informal conversation yeah. with you, with me from the tribunal, and with Kate, who's the representative Who's Kate? Kate, Kate what's now, her name? Kate is... Kate who? Kate is... My name. Oh, hello, Kate. How you going, doll? Watson, hello Kate Watson. So I'm the lawyer that Comcare have engaged to act on their behalf in your application. Okay, and who were you hired by, Comcare or were you sent by the AAT? I'm hired by Comcare. You're hired by Comcare. Can I ask how much you cost an hour? Just curious. No, 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 no. Now, Dr. McLean, no, I'm sorry. Now, I'm, this is, in essence, this is a conference that is arranged by the tribunal and my role as the conference registrar is to direct where we where we go and what we talk about at this conference now it is important that we stay focused on the issues but i also just wanted to make sure that you were aware dr mclean that this is not a final hearing okay this is not well i wouldn't be present uh, excuse I me can actually really appreciate it dr mclean if if we didn't interrupt each other, if we allowed, if you allowed me the opportunity to just let you know what is going to happen at this conference, because um, I am concerned uh, that you might can, have. Can you please just here, in, you please just for a minute, a please just for a minute? I need to say I wouldn't be going through with this conference if there was a decision today, because it's inequitable, unfair, and the government's already like murdered me and covered it up, and they've got a um. A, um, a, a lawyer, and they're going to absolutely there bury no me. <laughs> there is no decision that's being made today. So that, that obviously helps you with what you just said there, you know, that, that you didn't want to go through with it if there was a decision. In addition, so I, I have an acquired there. brain injury, and I need a yes. representative for um, um, a, a disability advocate because I don't understand legislation. I am unclear what it even is, why I'm rejected, but I know why. And um, and um, I forget what I was going to say. And um, I would yeah. like I would like permission to, to read a statement. Yeah. No, no, let me just actually tell you what the purpose of the conference is, okay? Because it's it's not the final hearing where a decision is made by a tribunal member about whether you get compensation or not. Today is just an opportunity to understand the like as you said, you, you've got some concerns on that front. It's an opportunity. Well, to it's illegal to, to discriminate me in an inequitable, inequitable okay, way. So Dr. McLean, if, if this is going to be how you participate in this conference. Okay, I'll give you a chance, I'm but I've needed to say it. I'm going to be able to continue and I will need to refer it elsewhere. But I would really like to give you an opportunity to understand what the tribunal can and can't do, which is what we can talk about today. I'll be silent then until I speak. And to assist you, it's not about being silent, it's just about having a 
providing the appropriate opportunity for everyone to, to say their piece, okay? And if, if I can't even tell you what the point of this conference is, we're going to really struggle today and I don't intend to continue if we're struggling, okay? I'm just putting that out there. If we do have continued interruptions and an inability for, for people to get their appropriate points across, then we will be um, we will be stopping this conference, and the matter will be referred on to a tribunal member for another event. Which is why I want to describe what this is all about. So, as I said, I'm not a decision maker. I'm not making any decision about this matter. It's just a chance to understand. It's a private conversation, so what we talk about here won't be passed on to any tribunal member should the matter need to proceed to a hearing. And that means we can feel free to speak freely about this matter without anyone feeling like anything they might say could be held against them at a later stage. Not at all. No one is giving evidence today, which is why reading out a statement, if it's a lengthy statement, doesn't really help us too much today because nothing that anyone says here today is evidence. That, that happens at a hearing, which is what happens if we have to go further with this matter. So today is an opportunity to understand, look, what is the decision under review and what are we going to do about it? What do we need to do here at the tribunal? Is there information that we need to gather? Um, is there anything that we can do to try to resolve the dispute? And if so, well, I'm good. But if not, then how do we prepare for a hearing? How do we make sure that both you and Comcare are ready to go for a hearing? Now, I understand, Dr McLean, that you, um, what you say about wanting an advocate or needing some assistance through this process, and I absolutely understand that, um, that, that request. I want to make it very clear that the tribunal doesn't appoint people to represent other people. So it's not something that I can um, can give you or, or help you get. But what I can do, and I don't know if this has happened for you already, but following today's conference, I can certainly um, provide you with a list of um, advocates or some information about how you might go about speaking with a lawyer. Is that something that you'd like me to do, Dr McLean, to give you some of that information and then you might be able to make your own inquiry? No, thank you, because it's out of balance. It takes advantage of me and it speaks down to me like a moron when um, I know well the government's cooked and they're hiring someone to cook me. Okay, well, that's, if you don't want me to, to send out those details, it's absolutely fine. Um, I don't know if you have anyone else, a support worker or, or a friend or, or someone who you might want to participate in this process with you. Uh, that's obviously, you uh, can bring anyone to this, this process if you like. That's absolutely open to you as well. It's a bit late now because I did try and cancel it during the week, but, um, but I was um, kind of pushed... Um, to, to take this conference, even though I cancelled it a couple of days ago and I wasn't expecting the call. However, um, I just want to say that... Um, oh, what was the question? Oh, that, um, oh you were saying... Um, about, oh, yeah, I mean, I mean... Oh, I forget what I was going to say. Sorry. Keep going. That's okay. When you remember, we can come back to that. That's yep. fine. So I think we were just talking about um, whether there's anyone who might assist you and that's something you can look to in the future. But so let me just, I appreciate that you didn't want to go ahead with today's conference, but I think if, if you can grant me the indulgence and just have a quick chat now because my, my concern is that if we don't have this discussion now, it will be probably like two to three months before we can get another um, discussion scheduled. And if nothing is going to happen in the meantime, then um, you know I don't want this matter sort of you know hanging over your head and weighing on you, Dr. McLean. If there is a way that we can move forward, so you're encouraging so a conciliation. No, 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 no. I'm not at this point. What I'm encouraging is just a discussion about how we can best move forward. 
Mm. So um, one thing that I was um, wanting to talk to you about was providing you that list of advocacy services. Okay, well, send them through. Yeah, send them through. So that's fine. You can send them through, please. Um, Thanks. I'd be grateful. I'll be grateful for that. Thank you. Yeah, look, look, there's no harm. You don't have to do anything with that information if you choose not to, but but it's there if you need. Okay, okay, thank you very much. If that's okay. Thanks, Dr. McCain. So what we do, what I then wanted to just really turn to, because you have said, in, in your correspondence and today that, you know, you didn't really understand the basis for the decision. And I was hopeful that maybe we could discuss today to try to help you understand the decision if that was something that, that you would find helpful. Um, and so my understanding of what the tribunal has, and I should be very clear, the tribunal can only do certain things. The tribunal isn't, um, you know, it's not a complaint process. It's not, it doesn't have wide powers to to um, to do all, all sorts of things that people might ask it to look at. All it can do in your instance here is look at whether Comcare should be paying you compensation for a work-related injury. That's the decision that we have in front of us. You made a claim for Comcare, for compensation, um, based on on your um, your job. I think you say that you have a work-related injury and you've made a claim to Comcare. Comcare rejected that claim. They said, no, we don't pay you compensation. And they've done that on the basis that you weren't the right kind of employee. And so if I just wanted to have the opportunity to maybe help or, or assist you to maybe better understand that... Decision. You're saying that it's like it's an absolute like decision that's already made. Well, no, this tribunal hasn't made its final decision. I was simply referring... But you're talking to down to me so I here. can understand it. But anyway, yeah, keep going. It's not the only thing that I can do, though. Have you have you considered the information contained at um, killim.info? Um, I'll be honest, I have not, and I don't know what Oh, well, you should have informed me that you couldn't access the data that I wanted to present and then offer me a way to present it, because that's really unfair. Well, let me let me just sort of go back and say, um, as I said, I'm not a decision maker. So I'm not making a decision one way or another about your matter. So if that provides you any comfort in terms of um, my uh, behaviour in today's conference, is that I'm not making a decision about whether you get compensation or not. Now, you're right, you have a range of things that you might be able to do to um, address any concerns with the NDIS or, or with Comcare or with other other issues that you might have with the Commonwealth Government. But I did want to make sure that I was really clear about just what the tribunal could do. Can I please um, interject? So the tribunal can only... Let me just finish this thought and then I will come to you, Dr McLean. The tribunal can only look at that decision of Comcare and determine whether you do get compensation or not from Comcare, okay? That's the only thing they can look at. And obviously there are rules in the law that look at whether you would be entitled to that compensation or not. What did you want to say, Dr McLean? Um, I wanted to say that you're saying that AAT is going to make a decision, but not today, and that... Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are laws, blah, blah, blah. We're at this conference. Now, I want to interject um, a little bit about the areas of responsibility under the Attorney General. It's um, and, and framed by my experience, which actually overrides um, the, um, the, the, the space in which the Administrative Appeal Tribunal works. 
and I'll explain why. There's administrative law. Um, I've, I've, I've been really rejected that. Alternative dispute resolution, um, which is what this is, I guess, bankruptcy. Um, I've just had a conversation with AFSA and they refused to offer me whistleblower status even though I know about heinous government crime linked to, to murder and tax fraud. Constitutional law, courts and tribunals, well, I've failed in retrospect, not one, but two VOCAT cases and one, no, two um, uh, AF, uh, what's your thing? AFSA, AFSA something, uh, um, I can't remember. The human rights, the human Australian Human Rights Commission free handball kicked a over two million dollar conciliation um, to the opposition um, without a legislative um, framework in that they were able to do that and henceforth um, all these things are evidence of a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice which is framed by my former partner and ASIO employee who already owes me half a million dollars. International law, when I went overseas, I was kicked out of England. Legal assistance, the Attorney General has to provide me with legal assistance. If you are under the Attorney General, you must abide by that. Marriage and family law, I was engaged to a man, and um, so that's got to do with me as well. Personal and property securities, well, um, that's to do with the um, injustice of the um, the um, the financial control my former partner had me on, and that um, he um, was on two to four hundred thousand dollars a year, and I was expected to keep up on four hundred dollars a week. And the Royal Commissions um, now I've made submissions to the Royal Commissions um, that detail um, crime malpractice, all those things, and uh, they welcome my information, you know, to milk me of my experience, but they won't report crime. That's the same as the police, the federal police. Um, it goes to IBAC, um, it goes to um, the Victorian Inspectorate, and it goes to um, the federal ombudsman and ASIC and APRA. I'm a failed whistleblower. I know about murders. I know about a whole lot of stuff. There is something going on federally in politics that um, overarches the AAT. And there's another one here, fraud and anti-corruption policy. I have evidence right here on my computer of $1.3 million in tax fraud and a cover-up by ASIO with an employee. Freedom of information. The OAIC have refused flat out to indulge me information that I may get to try and unpack why I've been systemically persecuted so much. Legal services to the Commonwealth. I think um, Kate, um, Kate Watson is a, a representative of that person. So it seems like I'm fighting a very inequitable um, thing here that Kate's been appointed by probably someone under the auspice of the AAT, but I'm expected um, to, to get information on how to talk to a lawyer um, well after I've actually talked to the lawyer. Um, there's management of government records, which I know has been cooked from the start because I'm actually, I, I, you probably know, a very public person. I've written books, I've spoken in Parliament, um, from Dubbo to Montreal um, to Warrnambool on all the TV and radio stations and that kind of stuff. So I'm actually um, a semi, not famous, but I mean, I'm well known. And now because I've advocated for myself in a medical malpractice case in which Greg Hunt covered up the evidence and knew about it and including many others, including um, other MPs and stuff, um, it's a, it's a loggerheads. So um, in terms of that, there's privacy. Um, I mean, I rang Greg Hunt yesterday and he knew exactly who I was. Um, areas of responsibilities, Minister for Industrial Relations, there's the work, health, safety, rehabilitation and compensation. So what you're doing at the AAT is centered around that, but overseeing that and framed by the other issues I have is under the Governor-General, 
or it would have to be under the Prime Minister. Now, the portfolio agencies and courts and tribunals that she controls is the Administrative Appeals Tribunal. And I am not silly, I may be a bit slow and forgetful, but um, I'm very, very aware that there exists a um, federal systemic conspiracy um, to kick the can down the road, as you were saying, another three months, um, and you are all acutely aware I am destitute and I live in poverty and I haven't got a cent. Um, in addition, she oversees the Family Court of Australia. I have been intercepted from ASIO and I have um, been rejected access to the Family Court of Australia to get my compensation from my former partner. It's now been six years. The Federal Circuit Court of Australia may be an avenue that I'll have to go down um, because, I mean, money really means nothing to me. It's my health and my dog, you know. Uh, I'll get by somehow. But um, the Federal Circuit Court of Australia is under her portfolio. So if I take this to her, um, uh, she oversees that. So, and I've already emailed her about this systemic, oppressive and conscious, malicious desecration of me and my person to do with all sorts of discriminatory things um, and and an absolute pure evil after um, I was um, forced out of um, a statement to suicide in hospital from a systemic malicious oppression that came from local, federal and government agencies. Now that included Comcare and the Fair Work Commission in the industrial relations and the Safety, Rehabilitation and Compensation Commission. So as far as I'm concerned, I don't think I'm getting a letter very soon framed by all the evidence I have and that you'll have failed to look at without acknowledging it to me, the whistleblower website, killin.info.com, because the movement to maim and desecrate me has not stopped with my fatal injury in a hospital. Um, it has it has kept going, and further to that, I probably who would know because I've never been assessed have, but I know um, a a critical disability with memory, and um, in addition to that, apparently I have a mental illness. But um, I mean, who would really know? Because I haven't got medication, I haven't seen a psychiatrist or a psychologist in nearly 11 months since I was kicked out of the hospital as a vagrant, homeless, squatting, no food, no car, and now no job, having been incarcerated illegally by my family who um, who believed the hype um, that I was an extortionist for this GP. And um, they are already inherently prejudiced as much of society is um, to people who are gay, people who, um, have admitted to drug use, like, you know, just about 90% of the Australian population. And um, it's easily um, uh, framed by those things, you know. Additionally, I've been rejected from the Commonwealth Director of Public Prosecutions and the Inspector General of Intelligence and Security has acknowledged me under a pseudonym. And then I have come forward with the evidence about my former partner and um, they have, um, like many agencies, including APRA, NHPOPC, the Mental Health Legal Centre, Health Complaints Commissioner, the uh, Mental Health Complaints Commissioner, wherever you see hospital, I could go on. The police, I've been to the police no less than 16 times in the past two months. No one will hear my story. The Inspector General Intelligence and Security has rejected me. This is all under her portfolio. The National Archives of Australia, that was to do with I'm an artist. I've been an artist for 20 years. So my portrait was just about to be um, collected by them. And then they suddenly ran out of room. Um, the office of the Commonwealth Ombudsman is the head honcho in the land. And not only was it seen to be okay that it offended my human rights and abandoned my duty of care, that even the, the stupid fact that I was able um, to kill myself in a hospital when the explicit reason to go there was to not die, um, that 
I had an agreed illegal contraband that was ratified and justified by the hospital and by the Mental Health Complaints Commissioner before, lo and behold, as the story usually goes, a panel of specialist lawyers come in to represent, you know, a few onion layers down, and then they mark it up in such a way that I don't get justice. Now, they've done that with the Australian Financial Security Authority. Oh, that's what I was going to say. So it went to the Health Complaints Commissioner, then the Mental Health Complaints Commissioner, then the Ombudsman, and even the Ombudsman condoned that killing. And what it was, was a conspiracy um, through agencies systemically attacking me via proxy for, I'm not quite sure what reason, but I will be able to prove that very, very easily if you acknowledge this whistleblower website. Now, the Australian Financial Security Authority, in congruence with HCF, my insurer, um, they acted together and with WorkCover, Comcare, and now, again, aiding and abetting my death by um, kicking the can down the road and making life as hard for me as possible that that might be possible. And you well know that it's possible because I've already done it and I've already died. So they have. I begged them for help. I begged them. I said, my poor dog, I can't feed it. You know, I've got a beautiful dog here. All I want is a simple life. Now, and I've told you about, and, and they, they acted um, with, with um, impunity. And, and, and oh, just on that point before, the, the Ombudsman and my whistleblower things that have failed at ASIC, um, APRA, the Commonwealth Ombudsman and IBAC, um, I'm going it alone. So um, I don't actually need the approval of the AAT and I don't need the approval of um, the, um, the um, whoever she is, the um, minister, because I mean, all of these agencies underneath her have already um, like gaslighted or rejected or acted not in my favour, including the next one, the Human Rights Commission, who free kicked at up to two and a half million dollar issue to the other team. Now, I know this is corrupt from the top because I've actually spoken to the um, office of the Prime Minister and they know who I am and they've acknowledged my call and the uh, Attorney General's even accepted my complaint However, um, they're just not getting back to me. Now, the Australian Human Rights Commission were told by someone, like every agency, including nowadays the NDIS, the NDIA, Centrelink, it goes on. Um, I could list a million of them. Um, they're all geared against me. It can't be coincidence. I have evidence of murder. I have been murdered. The Australian Human Rights Commission rejected a $2 million thing, free kicked it to the other team. And then I just thought, you know what? I'm going to test this theory. So I went to the agent that I was having the fight with and I offered them a nice little, um, uh, like a, like a offering, you know, a peace offering that, um, we don't have to go through the Australian Rights Commission. Let's just do this on our own. And, so the Australian Human Rights Commission told me that they had withdrawn and then they gave me um, some kind of legislation I don't understand um, that that was legal. But I just pretended that I didn't even know about it and went straight to them. Lo and behold, there's a, there's a few hundred grand. Um, <laughs> this, the Office of the Australian Information Commissioner, they're, um, they're like... Um, rejecting all of my information flat out and um it's called freedom of information for a reason i have a right to um to have the information that agencies hold about me and i'd like to please ask if um i could ask both of comcare which i already have and they've rejected me and in, in addition with comcare paul fowl i asked WorkSafe to help me with my appeal and um, they refused me. Now, that's really odd to me and I threatened to sue them. And anyway, as it went down the line, it suddenly appears that there's some systemic clear corruption happening in that um, Paul Fowler was the, uh, after Bernadette White and after Zoe Del Zeppo and all those people, 
uh, who kicked the can down the road, you know, while I was hospitalized and killed and all that kind of stuff. Um, it got to Paul Fowler and he rejected me. And uh, turns out, lo and behold, he was the old head at WorkSafe. Now, this is really interesting to me because I was having a look online today and um, the people who were rejecting me, Tim Goss and um, Peter Fisher and a few others at AFCA, who have acted in congruence with this whole movement to desecrate me, um, were also um, workers at Comcare and lawyers. And I just want to say one more thing in that um, further to the desecration of me as a person, my framing, um, my maiming, the, the, the conscious and malicious um, oppression that was local, state and federal from the government that um, forced me to kill myself. But that wasn't enough. See, then I got out of hospital and lo and behold, None of them act, and I'm 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 destitute, right? Um, and in addition to that, then I all my the only things I have in the world, right? Uh, um, my computer, my dog, and a bed. And further to this, they absolutely knew that all my evidence that I'd collected over the years to oppose this systemic abuse and oppression that is victimization, which is illegal. But however, the Victorian Human Rights and Legal Opportunity Commission will not hear one single thing that I've got to say to them. So I went to the Ombudsman and the Ombudsman said, um, oh, well, I heard that totally fine. I'll just finish up now. So um, um, the, they wrecked my um, internet, my website. My website is my identity and my business address. That's the mechanism by which I make money. Um, they destroyed my um, intellectual property. They destroyed um, my, my business. They destroyed everything. Uh, I, it's quite funny, actually. Anyway, so the duty of care of the government towards me in an overarching systemic way has been not only liberal and slander, which is illegal, but vilification, such as my desecration in the media and between agencies, of which I can't get the information, it's been a victimization of me and discrimination and my life lives in deficit. It does not meet my basic human rights and is indeed a criminal, systemic, very conscious and hugely malicious conspiracy that is systemic. It singles me out and it's designed to lengthen the amount of time of my distress in order to aid and abet my death before justice. However, I've got some funds and the AAT is under the auspice of this Attorney General, uh, Michaela Cash, I think, and I know that my complaint has been directed to the police, to the federal police, to you guys. You won't look at the evidence. You have forced me to this um, thing today. You are hoping that um, this will go on and on and on. And it's really acting in congruence with the whole movement to desecrate me in a financial way. Um, either way, if I'm a millionaire or if I'm not, because no one can hold anything over me, because in actual fact, my currencies are not money. My currencies are happiness, knowledge, and um, my dog. Um, and in addition to that, just to cap it off, I've been getting death threats at my home um, only last night and last week and the week before. People coming to my window, seeing my website killing.info, which is my whistleblowing website, and threatening to kill me. So in addition to that, I can't go to the police. Um, if I can't go to the police to report murder or a death threat, and I, 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 there is literally nowhere left I can go. Like, I can go to the AAT to try and solve this complaint. And that's under a particular little bubble. But what's the bigger bubble is it's already at the federal health minister, who's kicked the can down the road ages ago and conspired to my death. And it's already included a whole litigation of... Um, of, of um, areas of responsibility under the Attorney General. Now, I believe this meeting is inequitable. 
I believe it takes advantage of my forgetfulness and I believe that that is discriminatory and you well know that I can't go to the Human Rights Legal Centre. I'm banned from the Mental Health Complaints Commissioner. I'm banned from the Mental Health Legal Centre. I'm, I'm rejected outright, systemically, from every lawyer in the whole bloody country. And I have been so successfully and heinously framed that I have um, lost my family, my friends, and everyone. It's lucky I'm my best friend. And you know what? I'm a, I'm a pretty nice guy too. So, and I'm not silly. So, um, framed by all of that, I'm not sure that we could even reach a resolution today without already assessing and acknowledging that um, you're all guilty of per perverting the course of justice in congruence with all that other stuff I've already said. And, and so I have a choice to make here. Like, A... Nothing's going to be decided today. B, it's about money, and money isn't my currency. Um, what is the currency of the um, the opposition opposing me is people in positions of money, power, and privilege protecting their reputations and the money that they hoard. And you're banking on it that I'm going to, um, uh, you know, fold because um, I want the money. Well, I've already kind of got some money it's a sum, you know, from the thing. And, uh, uh, like, I, 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 I'm a really huge advocate of justice. I worked for 20 plus years in the public domain advocating for um, people less marginalised, uh, uh, more marginalised than I was. And I used my position of privilege and power with... Um, uh, and, and just the fact that I'm, you know, white and speak English and grown up here and stuff to advocate for diversity and inclusion and people of all abilities. And, and uh, you know, I've had my own issues, as we know, but um, framed by all of that, um, I, I, I got off track then, but I just I just I just don't know what I'm going to decide to do because this for me is about justice. I don't think this is right that um, this liberal and slander and conspiracy to pervert the course of justice, which which I might say, I did get the freedom of information from the hospital and it says it was a fatal injury and it says um, it was a lethal attempt. So what, what, what that paperwork says is that I was dead. If they hadn't have accidentally found me, I'd be dead. Um, now, I don't know how that relates to um, the initial reason of me leaving work, which wasn't because of a mental illness at all. It was because, and this is how you've got it entirely wrong, um, that I think I've tried, I can't remember who I've explained it to, but I was fighting for three years in a vocat case, and I've already been denied one of them and I didn't know why, but in retrospect, it makes it clear. I've been cooked from the top. Now, this Geelong magistrate took more than um, oh, only a few seconds to, to read out some things like, you were doomed to fail from the start. Now, just before that, the lawyer gave me no outcome. You'd think I'd have a complaint about having no outcome from something that's gone to a magistrate. And I did complain. But it, it went to the official law bodies, and the law bodies said... Um, Oh, you know, they've, and they find a way to get around it to say they've done nothing wrong, but they actually did. Then they're not allowed to not give me an outcome. And the magistrate said I was, um, I was um, doomed to fail from the start. So framed by all this, um, I was working with a client who was um, who had schizophrenia and other psychosocial issues, and he's a lovely man, and but he had heinous child sexual abuse and rape and incest issues. Now, um, I, 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 I wouldn't even describe kind of what I was going through as a psychological injury for HCF's purposes. And to be honest, they're the only ones who put me in touch with you as a methodology to delay paying me so I could come here 
to go to Comcare, to get rejected, to go down the line, to um to come to the AT, to get it further kicked down the line, and you know, it's like a like a challenge really. But anyway, so um, I, I, I it wasn't even really for an error of mental illness. It was because of abuse from my client, and it was because um of the actual identifiable it's not a, it's not a, it's not it's not like an illness when your childhood sexual abuse is not acknowledged when you're a grown adult and that came to me later in life by doing my phd and when i was about 46 7 something like that. anyway um and i'd always remembered it but i'd never named it and further um th- that wasn't pre-existing for hcf's um reasons what you haven't um um considered so far not only framed by the huge conspiracy to kill me and then cover it up and then keep going but um there's the other issue of the evidence which i would have had if my business hadn't have been destroyed but lucky i had a backup um the all the emails that i sent not only to the to the lawyers five different lawyers over three years and how I had to beg um, uh, Geelong Magistrates Court for an outcome and how they let it lapse for till it was out of time until it was impossible for me to appeal it. Now, this smells all very familiar to me in the, in the methodologies that this movement utilises in order to lengthen the amount of time that I get to have nothing. Does that make sense? Oh, and I just wanted to say... Dr. McQueen, sorry. Thank, you, thank you for outlining that background and I acknowledge all those um, issues, concerns and distress that you have had against all of these agencies and your view about what's been happening with them. Look, I've interrupted at this point because... Sorry, I did go for a bit have, long. Um, uh, we don't have unlimited time today. We only have a further 10 minutes here. We, we have an hour... Um, for us to have this conversation. And I think it's really helpful to have been able to understand and, and hear your voice, Dr McQueen. Thank about, you. About the, the wide range of concerns that you have that have been pitted against you by various government and other agencies. Um, it, of course, is very distressing and I can understand... Um, it's a murder. You know, how, how you have found yourself um, in this distressing situation and why it is so distressing to you when you've explained it to us in those terms. I, I unfortunately, um, I, I, and I think, you know, you've probably preempted this in, in what you have talked about today, um, and you've used the words kicking the can down the road, and I appreciate why you use sort of that language. I, of course, would say it in a different language but it sort of has the same effect for you which is that the tribunal doesn't have the power to deal with those wide-ranging concerns and the only thing that we can look at it's the only task that we're charged with is looking at the question of whether you were an employee of the NDIA to determine whether you would get compensation that is literally the only thing that the tribunal can look at it can't even if it agreed um and could see what you're saying about all of these concerns and the issues you've had with other departments and, and other people um it could not make a decision to grant you compensation on that basis all it can do is look at okay well were you an employee under the terms of the law? And then did you have a work-related condition that is compensable? That is the only thing that they can look at. And they just won't be able to take into account um, the other concerns that you've had about the way justice or evidence has been preserved. They're only going to be able to look at what evidence we do have about those particular issues. So what I do want this is- to focus on. Um, just, just bear with me for a sec. So what I, yeah, if I let you now talk again about all of that stuff, um, <coughs> I'm concerned that we're not going to then have any time right. remaining to talk about what we do do next here. Um, 
So I do want to get to that point. Um, um, oh, look, I realise, um, Kate, you haven't said much or you haven't said anything really on behalf Sorry, of... Sorry, Kate. Care. I think I've described... That's I think I've the described that, um, sort of the nature of the task that the tribunal has here. Um, and, again, without wanting to sort of not give you the space, Kate, to talk, I'm just conscious that... Um, is Comcare's position the same as it is in the decision that we have here? Has it changed yes. at all? No, it has not. Okay. One thing I would like to say, though, is Dr McLean, while I also have great um, sympathy for you in relation to all of these things you've gone through, I completely reject your assertion that we're all, or that I and, and Messina as well are guilty of perverting the cause of justice. I don't think that's an appropriate or helpful thing to say. Um, however, I, I agree that, yes, really what we're looking at is whether you were an employee, not a worker, a worker's a different thing, um, or an employee of the NDIA, and if you were, whether you've suffered an injury in the course of that employment. So Comcare's position is that you weren't an employee. That's a very discreet and not easily but can a question that can be answered I think quite quickly so in response to your concerns about kicking everything down the road what I propose we do is actually try and get that question answered for you by the tribunal as quickly as possible so that's what that's the Comcare's proposal is really that we ask the tribunal and that would be a member of the tribunal, so not, not the conference registrar. We ask the tribunal to answer that question for us. And if the answer to that question is, no, you're not an employee, then that's the end as far as Comcare is concerned. If the answer to that question is actually, yes, you were, then we start looking at the question of whether you suffered an injury in the course of that employment. Can I just and say so one Kate, sentence? One you sentence. See that, so bear with me, bear with me, would you? Um, Kate, so is Comcare's position um, that we could proceed to hearing on that particular point um, and try to get that answer um, for, for Dr McLean and for Comcare as soon as possible? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Dr McLean? Well, it sounds like you're asking for a big fat computer says no from you as fast as possible so the can's not kicked down the road. I'm not worried if the can's kicked down the road. I'm on the NDIS Commission's website right now and it's a question around the word worker or employee. It says here, and I read verbatim, under the NDIS Commission, a worker is anyone who is employed or otherwise engaged to provide NDIS supports and services to people with a disability. Workers can be paid That's or unpaid. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, I can confirm, it's Dr. McLean, where we where we are at the moment is employee. Oh, you didn't even let me finish the sentence. Workers can be paid or unpaid and can be people who are self employed, employees, contractors, consultants, or volunteers. I think you're both on the same page, and I think I'm going to have to go and appeal to the um, Attorney General and use this recording as evidence um, that I've been discriminated against, I've been outnumbered, Dr. it's McLean, inequitable, I'm sorry. 